and welcome back. Hey, Monty, guess what? Where are you? Oh, you're over here. Hey, Monty, guess what? It's our last week. It's our last week recording, and this is going to be our last chapter that I'm going to be talking about with everybody today. Yeah. So, yeah, welcome to the last chapter of the semester. You made it. You did it. Great. So we're going to be talking about the senses today, because without the senses, our brain is just a very large lump of uh, sodium, potassium, uh, proteins, and a uh, whole lot of, uh, what is it, cholesterol hanging out in our brain, which is our brain that is not touching each other. Stuff like that. So, yep, this is it. This is our last our last lecture, this one, and, you know, part two. So, oh, I enjoyed having having class with you guys. So, yep, it is time to end the semester. Yay. Now, one thing I'd like to mention uh, before I go into the lecture and whatnot is the following, and that is um, a lot of the things that you're going to see this week are not due until July 5th. I know July 4th lands right on the Tuesday. I normally make everything due, but since it's July 4th and I don't expect you guys to uh, do anything for me on July 4th, I'm making everything due next Wednesday, July 5th. So that way you don't have to worry about, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about all that shenanigans. Uh, worrying about going, oh gosh, I want to go do all the fireworks and things, but, you know, I've got to stay here and do my work or whatnot. I, yeah. So, no, I pushed it back to July 5th, so that way uh, it's all due then. So that way you, you're not having to get all your work done on July 4th. Because I noticed a lot of you kind of wait until Tuesday to get a lot of things done. But then can I blame you? Not really, no. Because... I'm just as bad a procrastinator, and I'm totally understanding with this. <laughs> Some of you are on the ball, but that's awesome. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So things next week will not be due on the 4th, because I just find that rude. It will be due on the 5th, okay? So you get a day of reprieve. And then after that, pretty much on the 5th, I'll be opening up... Um, uh, I've got to go look at how I want to do this, but I am going to be opening up some review for you for the final exam. The final exam will be 75 questions. 25 are from all the quizzes that you've been taking this entire, uh, semester. So you'll see questions that you've seen before. Um, and I put them in a quizzes for you to take over and over again. Um, as many times as you like, but it doesn't give you the answers, but it does tell you if you're right or not. Um, so that way you can see the questions. So pretty much you've got 25 questions down pat. And the other 50 questions are, of course, on chapter 11 and chapter 12. So, and it's just like usual, you'll have a list of words for you to study by that are literally from every single question on the test. And then you just go in and take that final with the 25 review questions and then it uh, goes into uh, the uh, questions from chapter 11 and chapter 12. Okay, I'll point this out again a little bit more in detail a little later, I think. Uh, so, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Anyway, so not to worry, I, I'm not really changing anything up too crazy much on the uh, final exam, so... It looks a little bit longer with 75 questions, but 25 you've seen before, and you'll have a chance to review them till your heart's content uh, before you take it. So there you go. And like I said, I'll, I'll get back with you with an actual definitive point-by-point uh, -point thing saying, you know, when everything is due and when it's due. Because I have to get everything in by a certain date with all the grades and whatnot, so you've got your grades. And yes, I will be going through and fixing a lot of the grades that I haven't fixed up till now. Um, sorry about that. Every time I sit down, something happens. Life. So anyway. Right, Monty? Wow, you're just, you're just leaving me, huh? Snakes. Anyway. 
So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the senses. We're going to be talking about senses as a whole, like touch and pain and hot and cold. And then we're going to be jumping into, in the second half of this, the special senses, which is basically uh, our eyes, hearing, smelling, tasting, stuff like that, that basically give our big old lump of cholesterol in our skull. So, uh, things to let it know that it's not just a big old lump of cholesterol in the dark in our skull. Yay! Like that one insane story I kind of touched on with the guy that was doing uh, head transplants with, a mon- with monkeys. And he did it, sort of. He kept the head alive, but pretty much it was just all the senses had been cut off. The brain was alive, but oof, that's just scary, scary sounding to me. That's why these chapters go well when I choose them on the fall semester, because the skeleton, usually the skeleton chapters land perfectly for uh, Halloween. I can bring up all those squeaky science stories anyway squeaky where are we going here we're going crazy so anyway as a refresher we have our map again because you know i'm a nerd and it's uh marvel related and uh that and we need a map every time we look at this because if i don't have a map i get lost too because remember overall we've got the two parts of the nervous system we've got the central nervous system which is your brain and your spinal cord then you've got your peripheral nervous system which is basically everything going so we know what's going on with our body and outside of our body and lets us react to stimuli so we don't hopefully get into too much trouble and drop dead like the motor neurons which you know, and the sensory neurons, which is basically what we're going into today. So we've talked about the brain. We've talked about the spinal cord. We've talked about motor. We've talked about somatic. we talked about autonomic. We talk about sympathetic and parasympathetic, which is fight or flight, rest or digest. Now we're going into the party, which is the sensory neurons right here. So we know exactly what's going on in our body and out of our body. However, we don't know exactly perfectly everything, but that's just the joy of living as a biological creature, I think. Um, and we'll get into that because our pain sensors are actually can be tricked. They can be tricked, which makes it difficult for us to locate things sometimes in our body and translate that so we can tell somebody, which is oh so much fun on the receiving end being, you know, uh, not that I know, a doctor or a nurse trying to distinguish what the heck this person, you know, somebody coming in complaining of something is. And we'll get to that in a minute, like I said. If I'm not making sense, hopefully I'm making sense. Monty, am I making sense? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Anyway, so, again, uh, right here, again, I wanted to go over this. We got the receptor, so the stimulus, like a needle getting stuck in the skin, which I jabbed my thumb about a bazillion times with a needle, because I was putting patches on something my son wanted anyway and then it goes into uh you know the sensory neuron brings it to the interneuron which is also known as the integration cent- uh, center which brings it on up to the brain to make a decision like ow there's something sticking in my thumb and then you come back down to the motor neuron which then is an effector right here which makes you jerk or whatnot or get away from the sharp object you yank back from it so that way you're going ah mm, yeah after you've stabbed yourself accidentally with the sewing needle like you've done a bazillion million times before because i have anyway you think i'd learned to use a thimble but nope not me anyway So there's two flavors of overall senses. You've got your general senses, which is basically all over the body and what we're going to be talking about today, including the skin and various organs and joints. And um, and then our special senses, uh, which are basically smell, olfactory, taste, hearing, equilibrium, and sight. Uh, And we'll get into that in the next half in the next lecture. Our last lecture. So anyway... So, sensation is basically raw information sent to the brain. So, anything anything going to the brain that your senses are picking up, that's raw information, which is sensation. Now, perception, on the other hand, is the way our brain interprets that sensation. And Inception is a movie I still haven't seen. I know, I'm so behind. I am so... Trust me, when my son was born, 
I realized that I'm never going to get to see movies ever again like I used to. I guess I could sit down and watch movies, but uh, I'd rather read books. Anyway, so there are five types of sensory receptors. You got your chemoreceptors, which is glucose pH, your nocioreceptors, which are also known as pain receptors. I just love saying nocioreceptors. Isn't that fun? No CS, no CI receptors, no CI receptors. Yeah. Anyway, thermoreceptors, which is heat mechanoreceptors which is your skin your ears and even in these you've got uh, mechanoreceptors that were kind of like a sub part of these which is the proprioreceptors which is muscle tension which i can definitely feel monty's muscle tension as he wiggles around my neck right now which he's giving me a lovely actually it's really good because i have a lot of muscle tension in my neck it's where i store all my anxiety you know uh burial receptors blood pressure stretch receptors your lungs you know, so that way you know you're not feeling your lungs too hard. You can kind of feel it when you do take a deep breath. Um, photoreceptors, of course, your eyeballs. And we're getting into them, like I said. A lot of these we're going to talk about in the next uh, section because it's actually kind of interesting. I wish I could spend longer on these, but unfortunately this, this you know, this, this, uh, <laughs> you've already covered a ton already. And for those of you going into the next half, which is 169, there's a ton more even coming. So there's some things I have to brush across while going through this class, which is sad because there's a lot of really cool things about your body that we could just spend all day on really. But anyway, but nobody got time for that. Nobody got time for that. Anyway, so some terms you may want to know. Projection. So closely related to projection, the brain will send a sensation back to the source so we can figure out where it is in the body. So basically what's going on is this is actually your body trying to ping something going on in your body, down your uh, nerves and everything. And like I said, sometimes we can um, get, you know, um, sometimes you can get ghost pain and whatnot, um, like people that still can feel like they've had a, a, a limb removed or whatnot, but they can still feel that missing limb. Um, so our brain will actually ping what's going on um, to try and figure out where it is in the body. And this isn't always correct. Uh, and that's the reason because of our nerves, nervous system, the way it's built. Uh, there's some nerves, and we'll get into this a little later. It's called nervination. Nervina nervination? Yes. Anyway. And then there's sensory adaptation where we get used to things in the background and essentially tune them out. Like, uh, this is actually, this is actually a true thing, um, for once in commercials. And that is talking about, um, you know, what is it? Those Febreze commercials or is it Febreze? I don't know. One of those ones where you put the plugins on the wall and it makes everything smelly. I don't use that much because my cats get upset with that. Um, that and lately I've been way too sensitive to smells myself. Um, so, um, yeah, basically you can go nose blind so that those commercials aren't lying. That is a thing you can get. So you plug in something to make your, your house smell good. And you're like, mm, that smells so good. And then five minutes later, you're like, I don't smell it anymore. And the reason is, is because your brain kind of tuned it out and you can do that with a lot of different smells. Some it's hard to do. Some of you might know that better than I, and some, you know, as a former zookeeper, I can tell you there, I have smelled some smells, man. I have smelled smells. Like, for instance, bear cats, they're also known as binturongs. They're really cute, but their poop smells exactly like popcorn. Not buttered popcorn, just popcorn. It's so, so weird. So weird. Anyway. So, yeah, if you ever wondered if, yeah, there's uh, creatures out there that their poop smells definitely different than any other type of poop. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there is. I don't know how they do it, but it's also why I probably am not the biggest fan of popcorn. Anyway, pain, which we'll get into in more in a moment. We actually all have the same level of pain sensitivity on our receptors. We actually just have different thresholds of pain. I tested my own thresholds of pain by giving birth without, you know, any, uh, any painkillers because I'm an idiot. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, I'm a womanly woman. I can do it. And about halfway through, I was like, I am a stupid moron. Anyway, 
So, but I got through it. It wasn't fun. But anyway, so we all have all different thresholds of pain, you know. So, uh, so it's interesting with that. So we have the same level of pain sensitivity. We just tolerate it differently. It's interesting. Anyway, so we can divide the general senses into three main groups. You got your extra perceptive senses, which basically is uh, body surface, touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. Then we got our interoceptive or visioreceptive senses, which is basically, uh, you know, you can feel if your, your, your tummy's upset, uh, blood pressure. Like, I know I felt my blood pressure up, you know, teaching high school for many, many moons. There were some classes that definitely made my blood pressure go up. <laughs> and you can feel it just fine ph um also when you get hungry are you getting hungry uh is it time to go eat something yep 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 and then proprioceptive senses so this is changes in your muscles tendons and body position you know things you could definitely feel when you've slept wrong um or when you know parts when your muscle when parts of your body are going in ways that they should not be going yeah mm -hmm. That would be definitely it. Or if you've been slouching over for too long and then you finally sit up and you're like, oh, my back and things like that. Fun stuff like that. You feel it more the older you get too. Yay. So anyway, um, so there, the sense of touch actually comes from three types of receptors. So touch isn't just one thing. Um, so you got your simplest, which are free nerve endings, which are the simplest and most common in epithelial tissues. And when you have an itch and you've got to scratch it, it's these guys going off for whatever reason. And it could be a lot of different reasons, but basically the free nerve endings is where your itchies is. So anyway, tactile or messenger corpuscles, which are these um, oval masses of flattened connective tissue. So here's one right here. And this is for fine touch and texture. It's mainly found in hairless areas. Dun, 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 your hands and feet. Uh, so again, this is why we can, you know, feel things. And I, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I enjoy touching things a lot. I guess I've got a touch of the touchy touchies. Because, uh, you know, if it feels nice and smooth, I, I really enjoy that. Or there's some sensations I love and some sensations I can't stand, like corduroy, can't stand it, and lace hate it anyway anyway but then you know you're touching velvet or you know my pets and i'm like i love you and mati he feels really good too anyway there's actually some snakes that are so soft feeling they, they like feel like silk instead of i i mean when people touch monty they, they actually are like oh he's not slimy and i don't know why our brain tricks us into thinking snakes are slimy but they're not they're actually very dry and monty shed a while ago so he's feeling really good anyway but uh there are snakes out there especially king snakes they're so soft so soft i'm not suggesting you go out in the wild find a king snake and pet it i'm just saying they their scales feel like silk i don't know why they just do and a lot of the venomous actually feels pretty rough uh again not entirely sure why because king snakes and venomous especially here in north america both live in the same environment so why one why i don't know just again once again one of those mysteries of why do king snakes feel like silk and why do uh, uh venomous feel rough mm, i don't know it's good to have king snakes because they're the ones that actually eat venomous snakes. So yeah, a venomous snake can bite and king snakes doesn't phase them. Doesn't hurt them, doesn't kill them, doesn't do anything to them. They have the ability to negate snake venom and they will eat uh, venomous snakes. So king snakes are good to have around. Um, especially if you don't want venomous snakes all over the place. Not that they know, they're kind of dumb. Anyway, like I said, snakes is dumb. And I do mean that in the nicest snake kind of way. Anyway, uh, next up, lemon or pa uh, pacinin corpuscles. These are bigger ones, deeper in. So they're, uh, it's funny, they call this oval. And then they, they it, like, this isn't an oval, but it's epicycloidal, ellip ellipsoidal, which is another word for oval. Anyway, so structures get common deeper in the hands, feet, uh, deeper in our joints. And this feels heavy pressure. So if you've been jumping up and down and your knees are letting you know it, 
Uh, yeah, it's these guys getting triggered. Uh, same thing like the, you know, when people massage you and you know, that's, that's the good, you know, when they're doing it right and they're not hurting you, you know, those are the ones that get stimulated. So the deep, the, these are the deeper in, or if somebody grabs you too hard and you're like, ow, then again, that would be those guys. So temp, uh, so we do have temperature receptors or thermoreceptors. They're free nerve endings in the skin. There's two types. We've got warm receptors and cold receptors. And this is where the weirdness starts coming in. Uh, with messing with your body. So basically, warm receptors are sensitive up to temperatures above uh, seven, uh, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, but unresponsive anything above 113. So they go from 77 degrees up to 113. Weird. I know. Um, so you know you're getting hot, but then they stop because they just, they're, they, you've gone out of their range. So think of them kind of like scales and they've just gone out of their range. But anytime you're getting hit with anything that's 113 degrees Fahrenheit, that means you're pretty much blasting away uh, parts of your epidermis. So, you know, don't do that if you can. Anyway, cold receptors are sensitive to temperatures down below uh, from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a much smaller range than the warm receptors. And you're probably going, but, 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 but what about below that? We, or that's where it stops off? Yeah, actually anything below uh, 10 degrees uh, Celsius, which is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you get a freezing sensation. So that's where the freezing comes in. We don't like below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I know I don't. Of course, I was raised up north. I hate the cold. I'd rather sweat it out. Thank you. Right, Monty? He also hates the cold because if he gets below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, he goes into shock and dies. So, yeah, Monty and I are about the same when it comes to heat. We like it. Anyway, now... Also, uh, pain will pain receptors will turn on anywhere uh, above 113, which gives you the burning sensation, which is of course never pleasant. So, and it's interesting because the further you go away, uh, further you go down these two extremes, a you're damaging your body, but b the pain receptors will start blurring because they don't know what to do, and they'll start dying off too. So sometimes the freezing feels like burning, and the burning feels like freezing. Fun. So, yeah, it reminds me of, like, I think the first, um, oh, God, what is it, Punisher movie, and he was interrogating somebody, and he literally had him blindfolded and hung up, and he thought, you know, he he put meat cooking next to him to freak him out, and then he took a popsicle pop and stuck it in his back, and the guy started screaming, thinking he was being burnt. <laughs> and he wasn't, he was just getting hit with a popsicle stick, but he didn't know he had, you know. And that's that's the thing. It's like, yeah, there you go. So that that movie, that little snippet reminded me of that. So anyway. So he wasn't really torturing him. He was playing with his mind, which is kind of torture in itself. Anyway, pain receptors or nociceptors receptors consist of free nerve endings. They're widely distributed all over the place. Nervous tissue of the brain lacks pain receptors, which is why we can do open brain surgery. And we actually do. Um, if we're going into somebody's brain, we will wake them up halfway through to make sure everything's cool and we're not poking things we're not supposed to because we can tell that by having a nice conversation. But once you get into the brain, you can poke your brain all you want. Your brain won't feel it because your brain doesn't have any pain receptors. So, yeah. Weird. Of course, then again, with your brain being shoved into your cranium, it probably doesn't need that normally. So... There you go. Poke your brain. Your brain won't feel you poking your brain. Weird. All right, stimulated by uh, tissue damage, chemical, mechanical forces, or extremes in temperature. They adapt very little, if at all, which is why, no offense, guys, but I think somebody, a guy wrote this, because, you know, us ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Although there's some guys that definitely put up with a lot more pain than other guys. So anyway. So, supposedly, according to the book, they adapt very little, if at all. But, you know, I guess it's just how well we can ignore it or manage it. I'm not entirely sure on that end. But anyway, so. All right, pain, actually, and this is what I was talking about, the ghost pain and whatnot. So, pain has two different variations in and of itself. 
Um, we got visceral pain, which is pain receptors that are only receptors in viscera whose stimulation produces sensations. Pain receptors in viscera respond differently to stimulation than those of surface tissues. For instance, if you get a tummy ache um, and you're like, ow, or if you've ever had cramps, that's always fun. That's a different, that's definitely a different pain than something you'd get, like, if you got smacked too hard with a paintball, because, you know, I don't know about you, if you've ever played paintball, gotten some nice welts from that one. Uh, which is why I always wear eye protection, please. Thank you. Um, I'm just saying, visceral pain is different from referred pain. Now, referred pain is basically visceral pain may feel if it's coming from somewhere else in the body. This is called referred pain. So... This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier, is the fact that sometimes certain pain feels like it's coming from somewhere else in your body, which makes it really hard for medical professionals to sit there and go, okay, where do you hurt? And you're pointing at one point, and that's actually not where the problem is. But that's where your brain is telling you. And what happens is, why, why this happens is because there are common nerve pathways and a lot of the signals come up and join in these common pathways and because of this it, it gives kind of like imagine a highway merging and all the signals are going to your brain but because it's going up this main brain or you know this going up this main highway up to your brain for a decision um your brain gets kind of confused and goes oh yeah it's your and it's your left hip when it's in reality somewhere in your back. I've had that many times in my life. Um, so like an example of this heart pain is often feel like it's coming from the left shoulder or the medial part of the left arm um, instead of your heart. Because again, there is a conjoined pathway. And because of this, when your brain tries to ping and do that, you know, what I talked about earlier, that projection to try and ping it, it goes down the wrong way. And it goes, oh, it's it's your arm that hurts. And it's really your heart. Um, I've had this happen. Like, I have a lot of problems with my neck. Like I said, I store all my stress and anxiety there. It's a educator thing. I've been told educators do this a lot. So um, the best way for me to fight that is exercise. But I've been, I'm a lazy bum. And I really do need to exercise more. But anyway, um, I'm getting off my laziness. So anyway, what happens is this, um, I thought, you know, a lot of my uh, problems was in my neck and come to find out that actually to get my neck to unkink other than, you know, doing exercise with it, when they're doing massage, I have to have them be very, very careful to actually go from the bottom up and not from my neck down because that actually screws up my back and my neck even more because you've got to sneak up on it from uh by making everything relax from the bottom of my back up which is something that you know a lot of uh therapists found out the hard way when they gave me a huge migraine the first time they tried to fix me and um after that they were like oh we've got to sneak up on your neck or else you know it doesn't do anything it just makes you worse and then when i go to massage parlors and whatnot and I, you know the legit ones um uh, I still try to tell, you know, people this, and I still have had people that they they don't even read it and just do their thing, and they go from the neck down, and I'm like, don't do the neck down on me. It will screw me up. So, yeah. Another example of this is one time I had an ovarian cyst, which is never fun. Um, I, phew, Ladies, if you've had an ovarian cyst, I am... Oh, sorry. Uh, that is some pain right there. Uh, they are not fun. Guys, were those, you know. If somebody says, I have an ovarian cyst, you believe them that they are in the most pain possible. I'm going to say it right now. But basically, they're just cysts that will show up on your ovaries. And sometimes it feels like it's on the other side when it's not. Like, I had one pop up on my left ovary, and it felt like my right ovary was going to explode. Um... And again, it's because the, the nerve endings, especially down there, are very much all jumbled up. And they go up into, and so my brain was trying to ping it to figure it out, but it kept saying it was, uh, my sensation was it was coming from the left. So my perception, my brain's perception was saying it was the left. But then when I went into a CAT scan to figure out which one had the ovarian cyst, come to find out it was the right. So again, referred pain is 
just a pain all the way around because <laughs> it's like you're trying to describe something to a doctor or a nurse or somebody where your pain is and they think it's there but it's not there and yeah the same thing with heart attacks like if you, you if you're about to have a heart attack you feel like something else in the other part of your body especially your left arm's gonna fall off and th there you go welcome to uh, referred pain it's it's makes everybody's life so much easier not so see the, the, the joy of referred pain trying to explain to other people and they're just like uh. so you know because medicine it's easy anyway so there's two types of hold on monty's getting a little goofy here come on thank you sir thank you all right two types of axon fibers that conduct impulses away from pain receptors so basically when you feel the pain uh how does it get to your brain to let you know that you're in the pain first you got your fast pain which are known as the a delta fibers so these are myelinated so remember it's got those myelinated sheaths whether it be swan cells or the oligodendrocytes. um basically they conduct uh, impulses rapidly this is a, uh, associated with sharp or acute pain localized in the skin area usually it stops as soon as the minute you get off your foot off the lego um so this is would be like i call lego pain you know you step on something that was not cool and you go ow and you jerk your foot away or you know when i stab myself on the thumb with the needle because you know sometimes i'm dumb and um there you go that's uh, fast pain. Slow pain is unmyelinated, conducts impulses very slowly, up to two, uh, up to two meters per second. And um, although that's still pretty fast, it might. But this is the dull, aching, chronic pain, and it's really difficult to localize. And pain often continues after the stimulus stops, which is why slow pain is such a pain. I'm going to make so many pain jokes right now. So anyway so those are the c fibers and in the brain most pain fibers synapse in a reticular formation proceed to the thalamus the hypothalamus and the cerebral cortex basically trying to figure out okay well uh is there something we could release to try and fix it or not or ah uh, or maybe we should you know release some painkillers which is why you know people say you know when they go get a tattoo which i have also gotten a tattoo you know after a while you're brain does release endorphins to try and combat especially like fast pain which is why we go into that moment where it's like okay we can handle it we can handle it like i tricked myself when i was giving preg uh, giving birth like i can do this i can do this i can do this and then you know six hours later i can't do this i can't do this i can't because <laughs> eventually those endorphins wear off so so again uh, how do we regulate pain? So one of the things I was just talking about, endorphins. So the thalamus begins a sensation of pain. The cerebral cortex judges the intensity of pain, tries to ping with the uh, projection to locate the source of pain, and produces emotional and motor responses to the pain. In other words, you jerk away or whatnot, depending on what's going on, or you groan and rope your back because you just slept funny all night long. Gray matter in the brainstem, this regulates the flow of impulses from the spinal cord and pain inhibiting substances produced by the body. So we got uh, incomphalans, serotonin, and endorphins. But unfortunately, they don't last as long as we would like them to. Like I said, usually endorphins pop in. Um, like if you've got something that's over and over and over again, like getting a tattoo or whatnot, you can deal with it. Um, like I said, the, the original when I was having, you know, I'm going to give birth to my son definitely i was feeling <laughs> it, it was it, it's rhythmic but at the same time whoo doctor knocks you on your off, off, knocks your socks off anyway so proteoreceptors are mechanical receptors that send information to your central nervous system about body position length and tension of skeletal muscles so again the main types are your pancean those ones in the deep that are the big ovals uh llama oh laminated corpuscles um muscle spindles stretch receptors in her skeletal muscles initiate stretch reflexes in which the uh, spindle stretch muscles cause contraction that's why we all like to do the oh the stretch it feels so good you know because that makes yeah 
So Golgi tendon organs, so stretch receptors in the tendons help stimulate reflexes and oppose the stretch reflexes so you don't stretch too hard and hurt yourself. Help maintain posture and protect the tearing of muscles away from insertion. So in other words, it's letting you know, yeah, maybe you shouldn't, you know, run and not stretch first. So uh, yeah, always do your stretches before you do your exercising. Right, Monty? You know, I've never really seen a snake do the stretch thing like cats do. Or doggies. Anyway, so visceral center, uh, senses have receptors in internal organs. Uh, examples of this are our laminated color puscles or free nerve endings convey information, sense of fillness after eating a meal, as well as discomfort of intestinal gas and the pain that signals a heart attack. Although again, that can be a bit of a referred pain because it can ping all over the place and feel weird somewhere else. And then you go, oh, which is why heart attack signs or so odd you'd think you'd be like ah oh, but not necessarily so age related uh so going into the age thing before we talk about the special senses in the next lecture but there you go so age related hearing loss due to damage of the hair cells in the spiral organ which we're going to get to in the next lecture which are actually really cool degeneration of nerve pathways to the brain tinnitus which I do have. There's nothing like laying there quietly trying to meditate when your brain's going, nee! and you're like, anyway, age related problems include dry eyes, floaters, which I have one. I named him Phil. I don't know why I named him Phil. Um, my optometrist thought that was funny. Um, which are crystals in the vitreous humor. We'll talk more about them in a bit. But basically what they are is they're just proteins that got lo knocked loose and are floating around in your eyeball jelly. Which is called the vitreous humor, by the way. So, you know, don't write eyeball jelly on the, on the test. So, loss of elasticity of lenses, decreasing in combination, presbyophobia, uh, presbyopia, glycoma cataracts, macular degeneration. And the amazing part is, with the exception of floaters, which is just unfortunately age-related and you can't do anything about it, they'll either break down or hang out, depends on what they're doing. Uh, these things down here, a lot, with the exception of macular degeneration, although we're really uh, chopping on, chomping the bit on this one, we can fix so much. I mean, it's amazing how much we can go in and it's just a simple procedure these days. Uh, cataracts, we can literally go in and actually use lasers to clear up your lenses so that way the cataracts are gone. Um, a couple of my uh, uh, former colleagues had this done and it was they were shocked at how well they could see again. They were just like, I didn't know. Because it happens so gradually, you just get used to it over time. Remember when I was talking about, you know, nose blindness and blocking it out after a while you don't notice if it happens too gradually but the minute they go in for like cataract surgery they come out and they're like holy crow i can see so well so highly recommend um if you've got if your insurance covers it if you've got eye problems and you can go in and get some of these procedures done highly recommend although one of my coworkers, one day i walked in and he comes out of his classroom and he goes lauren do my eyes look weird? And I looked at him and yeah, his, his, his one eye was just, oh my God. It was like half blood. I mean, not like coming out, but you could see it. And like the, the cornea was like leaving and I'm like, oh my God, dude, get to the freaking doctor. So we got him to the doctor. He had surgery. Yeah, he, his, uh, his cornea decided to detach. <laughs> just, you know. Ping. Anyway, so luckily in surgery, he's fine now. And then he's like sitting there going, oh my God, I can see so much better now. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, your eyes fixed and pee. Woo. So anyway, also age related smell and taste problems due to loss of olfactory receptors, which is called uh, anosema. Uh, anosema? Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, one of the things is like uh, one of my other colleagues, he just retired this year, can't taste at all or he can't smell. It's interesting, so I have to kind of, I had to be his sniffer if like, you know, there was a gas leak in the building, which we had a couple. Ugh. Anyway. Also, uh, hearing loss is interesting because usually, and this was something I want to talk about, back in the day, back in the day, when cell phones first came out, there was a craze, you know, getting the song lyrics for your 
thing. But there was another one that was kind of like put in to everybody, uh, to the younger crowd that was pitched on the internet saying that uh, older people can't hear high pitches. And it's true. The older you get, the more high pitch you lose. It's kind of like dog whistles can bug some people, but not other people. But, um, uh, yeah. So they would put in this high-pitched ringtone to let them know when they got a text message or when their phone's going off so they can sneak a look at it in class. Except I was in my tw late 20s, early 30s when I started teaching. And this is right when that phase hit, you know, of these silent ringtones. Oh my god, I used to just throw things across the room. The noise would drive me insane. Because I could hear it just freaking fine. And I would... It, I don't know why. It would just... It would hit the violence button in my brain. I don't know what it is about some high-pitched noises. But they make me just scream. Eww. Anyway. um, So, yeah. Dog whistles are not my friend. Um... And, like, my grandpa, he's in his 90s, and he can't hear, like, for instance, you know, when we get the, uh, oh, God, what is it? I can see them clearly in my mind. Summer bugs, not June bugs. The ones that make the noise. Wee, wee, bzz, you know, the ones that you go outside, they're just screaming their heads off. Actually, they're screaming their thoraxes off. Cicadas, 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 cicadas. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, but yeah, there was one screaming right next to him, and he couldn't hear it at all. So, of course, then again, he survived everything that happened to him in World War Two. So you can give him some leeway, I guess. Anyway, so he goes into pain and how pain works here in this video. Highly recommend, so you can learn about the pain. The pain, if you're not already well acquainted with the pain. I hope you're not that. Actually, I hope you're not well acquainted with the pain. That was, no, that's me. So anyway, with that said, um, I'll see you in our next and last lecture in just a moment. Bye.